Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third grade. My name is Mrs. Nix. Happy Friday. I'm so excited to be here with you and support you as you become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. Now, to help you on your journey, I have a great thing that I would love to recommend for you, and it's so easy to get. It is an activity book. They're free here at PBS. All you need to do is send me a note. You can do that through the address that is listed below or the email. You can simply send me an email, but don't forget to include your home address so that I can put one of these books for you in the mail today. And it's totally free. And you get to do so many fun activities. Don't forget to include, uh, include your address. I think I said that already. All right, it's Friday, I can tell. I'm super excited for the weekend. I'm starting to think about what books I'm gonna be reading this weekend. I'm gonna be hanging out, um, cleaning up my house just a little bit, but I definitely am always thinking, what fun thing could I read? And I'm gonna be looking hmm, either at my, um, my online, uh, checking out through my local county library or using my online Sora app and finding out some really fun books to read there. So speaking of Sora, we love to do a countdown. We've been counting down the top five schools this last week, and I'm curious who is in first place this last week. Are you ready to find out? All right, let's look and see. Here it comes. It's Ewing Elementary. Great job, Ewing. You guys are the top school for our checkouts for this week. Now, third grade, if you want to help get your school on this little shout out board, it's super easy to do. All you need to do is check out your books through Sora and maybe tell a classmate or several classmates to do the same thing and then you can get your school up there. If you're Ewing, Keep it up. I feel like we've seen you on this list a couple of times. So great job with all of your book checking out. Okay, it's Friday. Let's go through. We're going to warm up our brains looking at these high frequency words, those words we come across often in our reading and writing. I know you've been practicing them all week long. So now I want to hear you big and loud. Let's go through and do it together. Here we go. Work, wood, word, with, will, wish, who, why, white, and which. Great job. I'm guessing you probably read them even faster than I read them because you're so good. I love it. All right, we've got two words today. We've got white, W-H-I-T-E, and which, W-H-I-C-H. Okay, help me out. Let's put them in a couple of sentences. Help me read these sentences. Let's go. Do you know mm, one you like best? My tennis shoes were mm, when they were new. All right, so let's look through. Do you know white one or which one? Ah, good job. I love how you were figuring that out. Do you know which one you like best? My tennis shoes were white when they were new. I have to be completely honest, they have a lot of grass stains and some dirt on there now, so they're not quite white anymore. All right, let's look at, I've got three things we're gonna go through today. We're gonna start with, whoops, we're gonna start with inflectional endings. We're gonna practice some suffixes and then finish off with some homographs. So let's look at these inflectional endings. Inflectional endings just simply mean we're making it plural by adding S or ES, or past tense by adding ED, or adding that ing meaning it's happening right now. Okay, there's some spelling patterns that go with the, each of these. So let's look and see. So when I have a word and I wanna make it plural, meaning there's more than one, most of the time I just add an S, like in the word offer, I just add the S. Announce would just be adding an S. I'm going, she announces um, our names every day. 
when I need to use an ES is when I come across, uh, or the times that I need to use an ES would be when a word ends with an S, a CH, an SH. Here's one, buzz, it's got a Z at the end. So ES, the, um, the, I'm listening for two buzzes of the bell before I can go. All right, so now I wanna look at words when I'm going and I'm adding ED or ING, and it, the, the rule is the same for both of them. So in this instance, the word is control, and um, I know that I've got um, uh, that short O sound, that, that vowel followed by a consonant, so I'm gonna double that consonant and then add my ED, so controlled. And then with the word remember, now there's nothing fancy over here with remember, so it's super easy, and I simply add my ING, just like that. All right, and then I've got the word remembering. We are remembering a lot of stuff right now. Okay, so here we go, we've got, uh, some reviewing to do. We've talked about prefixes, we've talked about suffixes, we've talked about base words. This week we're reviewing some of those suffixes. We've got three of them that we've been practicing and so we've got, read them with me, less, full, and able. Okay, let's remind ourselves what do, you know, why do we need to know what these are? Well, First of all, they can change the meaning of a word, so we need to be able to be good thinkers. But by identifying them, we're training our brains to look for these word patterns that are common so that we can break our words apart and chunk them into smaller bits and pieces that we can read. Okay, so less means without. Okay, so let's watch. If I have this word harm, harm, and I wanna say that it's without harm, I can add the suffix to it, and now my word is harmless, harmless. So I can say the dog is harmless. And how about this one? Full means full of. So if I'm full of, what's my base word? Help, if I'm full of help, then I would say that she is very helpful, helpful. All right, and last one, Able means can be done or fit or good for. So respect, and if I wanna say is um, able to be respected, they are a very respectable uh, person there. All right, so it's Friday. We're gonna do things a little bit different. I have a passage today and it is full of words that have our suffixes that we've been practicing this week. So this is called clueless, means she's without clues, <laughs> clueless with Mabel. Let's go through and let's read it together. All right, taking care of my lovable little sister Mabel used to be painless. She was helpless and I liked being helpful. It was all doable until I had a grand plan. It seemed so harmless at the time. Mabel was in a playful mood. I decided to teach her to walk. I am so thoughtful. Mabel held my hands and started to toddle across the room. I let go and Mabel took a tumble. I braced myself for the painful scream but Mabel was so cheerful as ever. I was speechless. She gave me a toothless smile and tried again. Now Mabel is tireless. It is pointless to even try to sit down for a second. Taking care of Mabel is still enjoyable, but it is a lot more work. All right, so third grade. Did you see all of those suffixes? It's full of it, right? So we talked about clueless. We've, what about lovable and 
painless, used to be painless when she was helpless. I love this. She was helpless and I liked being helpful. Those are antonyms. They're the opposite. Just by having this suffix, helpless and helpful. The root word is still the same. So we need to make sure that as we're going through and we're becoming these amazing readers and writers, we're using some of these suffixes. And I know you can do it. All right, let's go through and finish out today. We've been talking about homographs this week. Now, homographs are words that have the same spelling but different meanings. And we've talked about a few examples this week. We talked about the word fall and the word saw. See our pictures here? We've got two different things. Saw, meaning you've looked with your eyes, or a saw, like you were sawing wood. How about ring? We talked a little bit about yesterday. Um, you can wear a, a ring, or maybe that buzzing noise that your phone does when it's ringing, someone's calling. I don't think we talked about this very last one right here, but bark. You can see here's the dog is barking. But we can also be talking about the bark, the outside layer of a tree. So the same word bark, B-A-R-K, can mean two very different things. So let's go through and look at today's. Here's today's homograph. And the word is simply can. It's not even a hard one, right? You can think to yourself, oh, I know what can is. But can you think of the meaning of can? Ah, I bet you can. All right, we need to look at this particular sentence and you're gonna help me decide what is the meaning of can in this sentence. Okay, crushed plants and an old watering can lay on the ground. Okay, so crushed plants and an old watering can lay on the ground. So is that, does the word can mean a hose? Does it mean be able to? Can it lay there? Mm -hmm. Or is it a type of container for holding things? What do you think? There's an old watering can. Yes, so it's something that holds things. In this case, what is it holding? It's going to hold water, right? So that you can water your plants. Excellent job. So third grade, it was fantastic getting a chance to hang out with you this week, looking at those inflectional endings. I know that you're working on your spelling. You're going to practice it this weekend, reading those books, and you're going to find all of those suffixes and uh, uh, that we were practicing this week. And then I bet you'll finish out and you're going to find some of those homographs. They're everywhere. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I can't wait to see you back here on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.